Hello everybody, this is Terry D. Singleton of Intrigue Magazine. You're checking out our Intrigue Magazine YouTube channel and today we have the honor to have a sit down conversation with my man, Jay Alexander Martin. What's going on brother, how hey, are you? man, I'm, I'm glad to be here man. I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. intrigued. I'm intrigued that <laughs> I have your books and everything. Oh, I'm just trying yeah. to make it man, I'm just trying to get, on, get, get in the magazine man. Yeah, get, that's get, all, that's, you know, you're trying. You talk, yeah. <laughs> You gotta be modest about things. I mean, I've been in business almost 30 years now, so wow. you know, yeah. you know, every day is a new day, and every day you know, you, you, you know, especially with COVID and all that stuff going on, you gotta be, you know, think it's a blessing, man, to stay alive. That's true, and it's an honor to, to have an opportunity to sit down and talk with you, man. You're definitely an accomplished person, a person that a lot of entrepreneurs like myself look up to. Uh, certainly, you know, I can speak for the Intrigue Magazine staff. You're definitely the blueprint for success. So it's a pretty dope opportunity to be able to speak to a brother who basically defines success in the entertainment industry. Um, first of all, I want to start with asking you, uh, what, what was the inspiration behind FUBU, the clothing line that you're the co-founder of? Man, the, uh, the inspiration was like, you know, and, and when we first started, it was there was nothing for us. Right. I mean, it's just pretty simple. It was nothing for us, and you know, we were wearing whatever was there Correct. that was presented in front of us. Correct. And we needed something that was for us. Definitely. You know, uh, by us. You know that 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 that. You know, we have certain uh, how you say it intrinsic things that we do mm -hmm. or things that we like. Right. And no clothing line actually just, you know, spoke to that. Correct. Or, or, or had that. You know, we, like certain things, like we had, we would put like little pockets, you know, highway pockets. Right. Or, or we would put a little more, you know, length or, or space. Width, a little more right. space. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, we like space. You know what I'm saying? We need a little space, you know, and, and, and it worked, you know. So, I mean, and, and it really worked because we knew we were the customer. Right. So we knew what we liked. Makes perfect sense. You know, sense. we grew up in this, you know, and the hip hop culture and things like that. And and again, you know, almost 30 years now, we've been doing it. Wow, wow. So I have to ask you a question. Um, growing up in Hollis, Queens, you know, LL Cool J, Run DMC, and in the era, you know, where hip hop, I, I, I would like to say, you, you know, FUBU became prominent during the golden era of hip hop. So what was that like coming up in Hollis, adding to the, the flavor of black culture in Southeast Queens? I mean, every day was a, you know, you were younger, but every day was almost like a party. Every day was like, you know, our own uh, walk of fame. Right. Because they used to say, in the, you know, it must be in the water that in Queens, because a lot of people were successful in all different types of genres, of entertainment, music, fashion, right. sports, all came from Queens. Right. I mean, um, and at one time, even James Brown lived in Queens. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's wow. crazy. So, so um, you know, it's a lot of riches. It's a lot of uh, you know, uh, edu educational value. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, educators was there. Like it was just, it's just that. I right. think because you know, it's not that it wasn't. It was as rough as like let's say you know, the projects per yeah, se. Right. They were all projects in you know, in Queens, but. It wasn't as rough as that, but when you grow up in the house, you have best of best of both worlds. True. Um, you have, uh, you know, you have, um, you, you can see that there's more to life than just. Didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't you know, think about that. That's right. a good point. And, and I think that was that was one of the reasons why um, you can see it because at one time you could see you know you could go to projects or you can go or you can have a house. Right. So, like I said, it 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 again. It show it. Uh, they always say, you know, a person from Queens can go uptown and downtown, mm. right? True. To where some people, uh, mm. if you're from a certain place or whatever, you only see what you see, and that's it. That's true. You know, you almost think the world was flat. That's true. Until you go out and be like, wow, you know, it. Oh, well, it's, it's, it is round. Oh, that's crazy. Right. That's yeah. facts. And you know, I used to live in South Oswald Park, and one of the places that I used to love to go was to the, obviously the 165th Street Mall, the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And you just see, I, I'm, I'm not being biased because you're sitting in front of me, but I've lived in four of the five boroughs. I lived in Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and I've also lived in Queens. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like the energy on Jamaica Avenue is different mm -hmm. because it's like a black eliteness. It's just not, right. yeah, I can, I can kind of understand what you're saying. I can feel that because 
like I said, you know, southeastern Queens, you have beautiful neighborhoods, Hollis, uh, St. Albans, mm -hmm. you know, Laurelton, and you got the 40 projects, right. you know, so it's a lot of things right. in, in one, so I can see where, you, where you're coming from. Fashion Institute of Technology, now that's a school that a lot of dope people yeah. in the entertainment, in the, in the fashion business have come from. Right. What was it like studying it, brother? Um, funny, I, I failed. <laughs> I you failed. The, I failed. The, co the co founder of FUBU failed in I Fashion failed, Institute I, of Technology. I, I failed a lot of the classes. And not because I didn't know it, mm -hmm. it's because I, know, I knew it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say it again. Not because I didn't know it, it's because I knew it. Right. And K N O W K N E W. Right. Why do I say that? Because at the same time, I'm doing FUBU. Oh, I, okay. And it's working. Right. So I would apply my answers to the test mm -hmm. to what I was doing okay. because it was working. Now I understand. This wasn't before and, football, right. this was during. Right. Okay. So, so while it's happening, they're telling me I'm wrong. Right. But I know it's right. The dollars say different. But, you know, book, you can read a book mm -hmm. and be book smart, but that does, it only takes you a certain, certain Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And, and that's why. Okay. Yeah. So, we'll, so I never I never got my degree. I've been trying to get an uh, honorary degree for a minute. Oh, they, they, they still, owe you nah, honorary nah, degree. Nah, you know, it's, it's payola. I know, I know. It's payola. Know. But they, 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 they owe me one. They owe me one. They that's funny one. because, like, um, well, I have to ask you then, what what made you want to go to FIT? I, I, I literally, um, I was in the Navy. Okay. I was a Desert Storm. Right, right. That, Salute, right. brother. And um, a lot of people have known about me, which is weird, but um, it is what it is. I was, and I went into the Navy asking them, I said, well, you have anything in fashion? And the recruiter <laughs> was like, eh, Army fatigue? Nah, not really, <laughs> but you can go to school. Okay. Of course, you couldn't go to school there. You had to wait to get out anyway. But, right. So I, I had, I, I would always wanted to, um, be in, let's say fashion, but anything in that kind of job, right. in that kind of space. I, I don't care if it was beauty, I don't care what, I just always had that, 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 that want or that desire to be in it, and that's, that's what it was. Mm. Mm. So I know you went to Fashion Institute of Technology while working um, on your FUBU brand, but well, what initially drove you to wanting to be an entrepreneur? You know, working for yourself, a lot of people are afraid of that. Oh yeah. I know from experience, so what made you say, you know what, I got this? Um, how do I even ask that question? You know, I, I worked, I worked at Macy's mm -hmm. and you know, you, when you work or me, for me, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, when you work for someone else and even in the Navy, they had a um, situation or, or, or a term that they use, you know, or a term that's a hidden. You know, every right you have, and right to take away, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, wow. you're, you're not your property. You're, you know, property of the U.S. government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like a tattoo, it's like, yo, what are you doing? You're defacing your body. I mean, if you already had it, it's different, whatever. Right. But you, you know, you gotta ask it. You, you get a diary, you gotta let them know, wow. things like that. So, um, I didn't like that. Right, like, and specifically as an actor. Yeah, you know, I'm coming from New York. I'm an independent guy. I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do me. You know, so if I got to every five minutes, you know, answer and chain command, they call it. You know, and I, it just wasn't really me. Um, did I really at, at a childhood or, or or my coming up? Did I know that I was gonna be an entrepreneur? I don't necessarily think so. Mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna go work, you know, like I said, I was going to Macy's, I was working at Macy's to um, try to be a buyer okay. prior to FUBU. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I just liked it, like fashion. 
Um, I heard it was a great job. I heard they, you know, made some good money. Mm -hmm. You know, easy a couple of hundred thousand. So I'm like, yeah. all right, that's what I'm gonna do. And my mother always, um, always had her own business, pretty much. Oh wow! My father worked for uh, a company, um, big company, um, and he started from a clerk. And he was the vice president of the company. Okay. You know, black man, you know, working down on Wall Street. So nice. You know, so I had the role models, of, you know, of of them to to know that I could do something. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, what what what, what you gonna do? Right. And I'm a doctor as well. So hooking up with Damon, which I've known for like since childhood. Mm-hmm. Damon was always one of the kind of guys who was like, you know, look, I'm gonna just figure it out. Like, I'm gonna make money somehow, hustle, do whatever mm -hmm. I gotta do. And that you know, combined with me as like a, almost like a worker, like I'm just gonna make it happen regardless. I think that's what really pushed me more to be an entrepreneur. Because mm -hmm. I, even though we were we were doing it, mm -hmm. we, we were so young. Right that we didn't know what he was doing. But we, we did, but we didn't. Right. You know, years later you find out, okay, we we were marketing, we right. were branding. But this was a thing. This, this is a, advertising. This was a title, right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, we just blanked it as fucking, we hustlers, excuse right. my friend. Exactly, yep. You know, but uh, it's funny when you, when you reflect back on it, but how entrepreneurship is just like, now we know so much about it, we probably forgot more than people know. Right. You know what I'm wow. saying? That's deep. And, and you just, you, actually this, this book, not to, you know, whatever, but this book is about that. And, and, and when you think about it, you have to have a certain mindset to be an entrepreneur. Definitely. And I always had that mindset, I just didn't know it. Hmm. Damon always had the mindset, period. He right. knew it. And he knew it. Right. Okay, I have a question for you. So I, um, being the, uh, the the lover of Black history and Black culture that I um, that I have, I've been to the Black on Wax Museum in Baltimore oh, yeah. on North yeah. Avenue. You know where I'm going with this, right? And um, actually, the last trip that I made uh, a couple of years back, the uh, the owner um, gave me a tour, a private tour, mm -hmm. right? And um, I'd been there several times before, but this time I got a private tour, and she took me to see the FUBU yeah. exhibit. Right? That's crazy. So I bet you never had anybody ask you this one before. But what's it like being a black man in wax? How did that feel um, when they created... <laughs> I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. Because for those of you that don't know, the Black on Wax Museum in Baltimore, Maryland is an awesome, a uh, museum dedicated to black history, black culture, black future, everything. And there's a FUBU exhibit with uh, this brother right here and the other founders of FUBU. And so, yeah, what what was that entire experience uh, like? It's, you when know, they asked you... Certain, certain things in our, in our career was surreal. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing was just hope I don't look crazy. Right. <laughs> How am I gonna look at no? Works? And and the the biggest question about it mm -hmm. was what outfit you're gonna pick? Oh, because gosh. that outfit's gonna be on that person or you or your replica, forever. forever. Right, right. So I was always the guy that with diamonds and I was liberal. You was the shiny. Yeah, guy. I was very shiny. Mm -hmm. I was the face, to be mm -hmm. honest. So I picked one and it had you know replica of me with diamonds. Mm -hmm. Well, actually we had. Um, Keep it as corny as whatever, and it was uh, it was an outfit, whatever, yeah. whatever. And I look more like myself. Keith looks like. Sorry, my <laughs> bad. I don't mean to. Oh, I want to blast him, but yeah. Carl looks similar, mm -hmm. but his head is like kind of big. Uh, and but Keith's head is really big. <laughs> and Damon looks similar. I look similar, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's not like you know, man of so, exactly. but listen, exactly. I, I take it, you yeah. know, and it's, it's just one of those things that it's just like, that's, it's just surreal. Yeah, you were immortalized. You know I mean? Like, you're, 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 
you have accomplished so much that you have a wax figure. Exactly. Like, and no, the, no, and no disrespect to a lot of new designers and new people, but sometimes I have conversations and they're like, oh, well, oh, that's played out. And I'd be like, oh, that's played out? Bro, you never was on. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Like, I got wax figures of me. Like, Thank you. Say it again, though. Can you say that one more time? Uh, say that again. Well, uh, but the, the that you got wax figures. Yeah. Like, got, wax. that's it. But No, but even even more so now. I mean, you're talking about that museum. We're in the new museum uh, um, in, of natural history. Uh, the Black the Black Museum in, in D.C. In D.C.? No, I didn't know. We're in that one, too. Wow. Don't we're, in the, we're in a museum in Europe. I can't pronounce the name. Just, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll be, we're in, we have uh, something in um, the Jersey in uh, T.I.'s Museum okay. in, in um, Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, tra uh, I think it's Trap something, I can't, I don't really remember what. And we're going to be in the new, the Hip Hop Museum. In the Bronx. In the Bronx. We're gonna be That's in there. dope. Okay. So, I'm like, yeah, Im bro, immortalized. I don't have to do nothing else in my life. life. Like, right. bro, I'm, you know, so, but I get these conversations with these young guys and they don't, you know, it's like, oh man, old time or whatever. Uh, bro, I've been in business 30 years. Longevity? You've been in business one and a half. If, 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 if you're lucky, you've been in business one and a half. Longevity is something that a lot of people do not seem to respect and understand. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah, but just, to, I just, just, I'm, I'm gonna re re reverse back just for one second because I need to get this question. Mm -hmm. When they asked you at the National Black Owned Wax Museum in Baltimore to be a part of that museum, what was that feeling like for you? Do you remember like the how you felt when they presented that to you? I, as I somewhat recall not believing it mm. because to be humble you don't believe it because that's set aside for like Dr. Martin Luther King Malcolm X Malcolm X right you know like how, how you know what I mean uh, art. and it's like art. Historical, Heroes. like, and I just made some clothes, so it's like me, us, mm. and it, it's it's just one of those things. Like, how do I want to say this? It's, it's when something like that happens. You could say, okay, I'm being humble. But then something like that happens. What do you say after that? Right. Like, what's, what's below humble? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how can you, like, you could say, I love it, but what's, what's beyond I love it? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, or uh, vice versa. Um, it, it's something you can't really put in words because your kids, I don't have a kids, but if I had a kid, Right. I would take them there, right. and they would say, "Oh, wow, that's daddy." Right. Mm. Like, you, how do you put that? Like, how do you verbalize that? How do you put that in words? How do you write that down? You know, in a passage, or write your feelings down, like. And that's exactly why I asked that question. Because I needed to know. I wanted Intrigue Magazine viewers to get that sense of accomplishment. Like, that's serious, brother. Like, that's, everybody does not get that. And let me just be the one to say this. No, you deserve to be there. There's a reason why you're there. You deserve to be there. Because, yes, Malcolm X, obviously, you know, a, a very iconic figure in black history, uh, Martin Luther King and, 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 and several others. But, yes, you are a very vital part of our history. And to throw a point out, too, like, we, I'm not saying that, I mean, I can, I, you know, you just, oh, sometimes you pat yourself on the shoulder, you know, whatever, whatever, but you, um, you always gotta look before you and say, hey, you know, 
And when I deflected and I say, you know, Kark and I mm -hmm. obviously was the forefather of all right. this. Um, cross colors like that. Mm -hmm. But when we took it, we, not saying we wiped anybody else out, but no, we I mean, did like, it in such a on big a way. different level. That birthed a lot of other brands. Right. But I still always have to give my hats off to, you know, who who started the whole thing, like right. they call Kanata. But I, sometimes I I can't I feel remiss that they're not in there with us. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I know why we're there because we are it. Right. But Simply I love to see. I love to see because you'll you know if you you go to fashion because you go to fashion like um, exhibitions mm -hmm. you know FIT or whatever whatever and they'll they'll have you know all the super designers you know whatever whatever but they'll never really have a flexion of us. Right. So I wish that there were more of us there too, just as well. Because I don't want to. We don't want to be the only ones. Right. You know, we don't want to take the, 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 the mantle and be it, just it. Like, right. We want to share it. I understand. You know, so that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? You follow where I'm going. Yeah, I do. Um, my next question was actually going to be, I mean, what point did you feel like, you know, not speaking for the entire team, but speaking from a personal perspective, mm -hmm. at what point did you feel like you made it? But would it, wouldn't it have been that moment, or was there no, another moment? No, I'm, 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 I'm different. Like, I think different. I, I never look like I made it. Because, mm -hmm. to me, it, it, it limits you. Okay. It limits you by thinking you made it. I'm not, and I'm, I want to back into that a little bit more and explain it. Because I, I don't like the word goal. Because mm, the ceiling? Right. Okay. And it's tunnel vision. Right. So you only see one thing. Mm. And you can't see everything that's around you. Mm. And and leaves you open. Like I, I, I it's like lane, you know, if you in one lane, if you in a goal, you stuck in one lane. Correct. And then there's a bunch of traffic. Gotcha. And then, you know, instead of me, I don't look at lane, I look at vision, so that I get off the traffic and then I go mm. and take some other route. And I take my own route, not the loud route that I've seen somebody else do. So I can never be wrong because I'm doing it my way. Wow. I don't, I'm not, I, it's weird. I don't have mentors. I have strategic partners. We could talk that way. Right. But I ain't a mentor. Get out of here. No. <laughs> no. What about, is there ever a point, you know, reversing the question sort of, is there a point in your life, Jay, where you felt like you doubted yourself? You kind of feel like maybe this isn't gonna work. No, I am. I'm not a doubter. Okay. I I look at and a doubter looks at something at a problem, and they call it a problem. I call it a solution. Solution. Okay. I call everything that, let's say in in, in layman's terms of how everybody else thinks. I think if it's not going right, it's going. If it's not going right, it's going right. Hmm. So there's no like, wrong. Right, there's no wrong because okay. you're. If you do something repetitively over and over and over again, you're learning how to do it. Correct. So you have to do all that to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll have a conversation. Like you and I are having a conversation now. I may say something to you today, but you may say, "Wow, that was interesting," but never use it. Correct. Now all of a sudden, one day pops up. You use it. Right. Hmm. No wonder you wrote a damn book. <laughs>
You know, it's just my thinking, I, you know, it, it works for me. I, I just say it like that, it works for me. It could work for you too. <laughs> I mean, and you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm, 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 I'm not even listening to what you're saying, bro. I'm absorbing what you're saying. There's a big difference. A lot of times I do interviews, I ask a question, I listen. I ask a question, I listen. It's like I'm absorbing everything that you're saying. Let's, let's talk about your book really quickly um, in, in terms of absorption of knowledge, right? Because you may not have mentors, Jay, but simply, I mean, each, certainly you have mentored others. Right. Either directly mm -hmm. or through your book. So let's talk about your first book, um, Money Makes Me Crazy. And I'm sure you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So um, I took the liberty of buying your books um, uh, so that I could uh, uh, get that autograph. But more importantly, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can get some knowledge. All right. So let's talk first about uh, Money Makes Me Crazy. What is the title of the book? What does that even mean? Okay, so this book, uh, I'll tell you how it kind of happened. A friend of mine, uh, I, I did a wealth conference. Okay. Um, being his wealth conference or something at, uh, in Vegas. And the guy had a, uh, had a book. And he was like, oh, this, I need one, one to hook you up with this guy because, you know. And so I looked at the book and read it. It was like, oh, it was kind of about money. And I know in our, not all, all of us, but a lot, most of us, you know, we, we're not raised to understand money. Correct. At all. That's a fact. You know, we just, and as soon as you get money, we want to show you have money. Right. That's just That's innately in us. Yeah, it is. Nothing we could do about it. Right. I don't know, you know, I, we wired that way. So he had a book and I was like, uh, so he, my guy got me on the phone with the, the guy, actually his name is Ted McBillan. Uh, and he said, you guys need to hook up. And so you can tell your story and he can tell his story because mm -hmm. he had a formula on how to deal with money. Right. Which was kind of good, really, to be honest, because you never thought about it that way. And I'm a thinker. So fast forward to the concept of the book. It's about your thinking brain. It's about knowing who you are, knowing not necessarily your problem, but knowing who you are mm -hmm. in theory. You know, if you, you know, your uh, first thing you do when you go to go to those one of those uh, AAA meetings, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> right. I'm a spender. Right. <laughs> right. I had to understand that because I would get money and I would just spend. Course. I mean, at one time I had four cars. At uh, one time I came out of my house. Four cars. And they all, there's something wrong with all of them. I took a cab to work. <laughs> you know, like. Wow. Money made you, you crazy. Know, right. So you, 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 you're doing stuff. You're doing stuff. And sometimes, not necessarily doesn't make sense. I mean, you, you can make yourself happy, but you buy, you buy this, do this, do this, but what? You have to do it in moderation, or you have to know who you are, so that way you always will have money. Right. And because, again, money don't grow on trees. It doesn't. You know, and you can be, you can be good today, but then tomorrow it hits, you're jacked up. Right. right. So I had to really understand it. So we, 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 we I did, it's actually two parts of a book, of a one book. He put his principles in, which I thought that really made sense, and I wanted my people to know about it. Mm -hmm. And I put in my story and what I've done. And you said that you're um, looking to do a, a, re a revision as well. Yeah, we're doing a revision of it uh, coming up now. Uh, coming up, um, we're almost done with it. Okay. And um, it's, you know, post-COVID. Right. Uh, what was different. What, right, right post-COVID. Yeah, different, different of all the story. things that, because, you know, again, we all had a year of, you know, reset. Definitely. You know, and, and, and some people didn't even finish the year. You Correct. Know. Building so. an Empire, which is the uh, your second book. Yeah. That's the book I'm going to read first, and the reason is because I feel like um, from from the preface that I read, it's the book written for entrepreneurs. Correct. So that's probably what I'm going to dive into. Correct. Now, so 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 how it works is. 
I tell you about money, so you get excited. Well, that's I don't have you, any of that yet. I, so I mean, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm going to go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So <laughs> that was funny. It's true. I tell you about money. Mm -hmm. You get all excited because you anybody. Oh, I, I have money. I, I would buy this. And the first people, oh, well, I, why would I buy that? I'm not going to buy it. That's stupid. Right. Until you get money. Right. right. So now you got money. Now you know what to do with money. So now you got that covered. Okay. Then you go back to this. And you make the money. Okay. Then you got to go back to that because you'd have forgot all about what, 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 said here. what I said here. <laughs> okay. So I got to make the money first before I can read about it. No. I still have a Metro card, so no, there's no reason. No, no, you, no. The first thing you got to read this first because okay. you set yourself up. So at least you won't go totally overboard. Okay. Because I'm not knowing it's half the battle. I might, no, buy, I might buy two Metro cards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> knowing it's half the battle. Because you know better now. Okay. So when you get it, you, you're halfway, you know what I mean, be cool. Okay. Because you, you're going to go wild. It must be nice. Yeah, Four you're always going to go wild. Like, yeah. I, I don't know anybody this, that, that got millions or got their first million and then and thought that, wow, like, uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do everything. I'm going to buy my mom a car. I'm going to buy my house a house. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. Well, right now I can pay a cell phone bill, but that's about it. <laughs> well, what would you like to say, um, my second to last question is gonna be, speaking to black youth in particular, and I'm asking about black youth in particular, because it seems that, well, for one, you were a black young person, mm -hmm. and two, I feel like, although, um, you know, we all go through our struggles regardless of our nationalities and backgrounds, I feel like black youth certainly need a direct, uh, a voice to give them some advice. So what would you give a young black male or female, what would you say to them to encourage them to be successful? Um, it's funny, I speak all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, podcasts, I'm actually going forward, I'm going to start speaking to the troops. Nice. Because I'm, you know, of course I'm a veteran. Um, but, um, I'm not one to articulate, I'm not good at, at, at articulating those you can do with speeches. Mm -hmm. To be honest. Why? Because you have to be the one to do it for yourself. Right. If you tell me you want to start a business, what, what's my advice, what I should do, whatever, then you don't need to start the business. Mm. Because an entrepreneur is a type of person that figures that, excuse my French, shit out. Mm -hmm. If you need me to answer, ask that, answer that question, you're looking at the shiny object, but you don't know how that shit got shiny. Shiny, right. Hmm. That's a good point. So my last question is Drop going to be... <laughs> I don't know if there's a need for that. But my last question is uh, to those that subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Intrigue Magazine YouTube channel viewers and those of us, of uh, those who read the magazine, what general advice would you give them what words of uh, close out words would you like to give them? Uh, I would say something like this. Hmm. Stop calling people haters. Why do I say that? 
scenario goes like this. If you're telling me I'm trying to start a business and you're telling me I can't do it, this is a reason, this is a reason, this is a reason. Take that information, right? Write it down. Find an answer to that scenario. Go out there some more. Let more people tell you that you can't do it. Right. Give me the reasons why. Write all that down. Find an answer for it. Tell yourself, would you give yourself money for that business? Hmm. And what would what would you need for that to happen? Right. Write it down. Do some research all over. Write it down. Answer all those questions. Once you answer all those questions, then you start. Wow. One, two, go in the house, partner, wherever you live. Actually, let me say it another way. Go outside, get a rock, go in your house, turn up your phone, TV, all that. Sit in the room. Put that rock on the table or on the floor. And entertain yourself with that rock. <laughs> hmm. After you finish, sell yourself. How you gonna sell that rock? Three, if you're talking about fashion, go to the store. Walk up to the store, look at the signs, look what's in the window, walk inside, walk around the store, go to look, look at a uh, display, study the display, look at the clothes, look at the tags, look at the how, look at how it's displayed, look at all that. Take it, go to the counter, Watch everything he's doing, or he or she is doing. Take the item, put it in the bag, look at the bag, walk out the store, take it back uh, after, right? Take it back, and then get, write it all down. Every little process, every little thing you did. Then, ask yourself, why? All those things happen. What are the reasons? What is everything that happened? That whole experience. Then do it again on the internet. Okay. Because the thing about what people are not doing today is all they're doing is they have the answers to the test, but they don't know how to do the formula. Gotcha. You're not smart. If you just go, oh, summarize, oh, I got it. No, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on here. What are the steps? Steps. Can't skip steps. Right. I always say you can't cheat work that knows who's working. Mm. And that's the problem. Stop trying to skip steps. Stop trying to have an instant. Mm. Because when you get to a scenario, you won't be able to do it, and the internet won't be there for you. Right. Google ain't always your friend. Yeah. Wow. It's a fascinating brother, man. I'm glad I, I, I bought both of your books because now I, I'm, I'm assuming the, the, a lot of the topics we had during this conversation, I'll find right in these books. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah. So let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Uh, it's better off just going to my website, mm -hmm. jalexandermartin.com, with the letter J, alexandermartin.com. Okay. And all my social media is there, A, a fashion mind, Instagram, because uh, that's funny too. Uh, a lot of people tell me, a lot of people, uh, I've been on Clubhouse and things like that, and you know, you sit there and you talk to people and they're like, oh, well, go to my IG, go to my IG, go to my IG, IG. And I'm like, bro, I don't, you, you have a line? Like, why am I going to IG? No. <laughs> you know, go, can I go to your website? Right. Like, I don't care about you. Why, 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 like, why would you, you got it backwards. See, see pictures of them. Like, like you got it backwards. And, and 
And, you know, I come up from the age of, you know, we had nothing. Right. You know, we had no, no computer and all that stuff. We didn't have all that. Right. We just figured it out, you know? And these people today, or the people today, it's figured out for them. Right. And you still don't know the answer. Correct. Wow. You know, I got uh, the answer. You could get it. Like we went with. We had. I have encyclopedias. Is that the Britannica? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, one of my exes. Um, she's a well-known publicist, mm -hmm. and she would do a day with her interns, and she would say, "No phone." You got to, you got to, whatever I, I, whatever the task you have today, you got to do it without your phone. Wow. My assistant would quit. I mean, well, <laughs> not tell me about phone, but you know what I mean? Without the computer, I should say. Well, okay. Without, I mean, you can use the phone to call and whatever, right, but, without, but you can't, you can't, you use, can't use the computer. Research. You can't, right, right, right. Yeah, he'd quit. <laughs> Probably. He wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So make sure you uh, follow this gentleman. JAlexanderMartin.com. Go to his website. Make sure you go to Amazon.com to get his books. Money makes me crazy, or money makes him crazy because I don't have any. <laughs> and uh, building an empire. Again, this is uh, John. Uh, John. I don't know what the J stands for. You to tell no, me. No, it's just J. Just J. Just J. Just J. Just J. That's what he says. J. Alexander Martin. Uh, right here on Intrigue Magazine's YouTube channel. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, brother. I've learned a lot. I appreciate it, man. That's him. <laughs>